hamburger, also called a beef burger, hamburger sandwich, burger, or hamburger, is a sandwich consisting of one or more cooked patties of ground meat, usually beef, placed inside a sliced bun. Also on offer are hamburger sandwiches and salads. Bah. Two MMS News Now Roll The Intro Hello, my name is McKenna And I'm Jaden And welcome to the supervised holiday special of MMS News Remember, we are focusing on the character traits of MMS And this month's character trait is fairness Fairness means to make judgments that are free from discrimination If you see someone being fair to eat to either a student or another teacher, go to MMS News website and fill out the survey to see your name scroll across the screen. We can't wait to see what kind of fair students we have here at MMS. First, we go to our MMS News story with Reese and Mackenzie. Hey guys, it's the MMS News girls Reese and Mackenzie and today we're going to be talking about what's going on next week. Miss Nee's got a one for the most food in the food drive with 500 items. You can still donate to No Shave November till November 22nd at 1 o'clock. The winner will be announced later that day. On Monday, we have Student Council, Chess Club, and Comic Book Club. There is a boys basketball game at Granota's at 4 o'clock. Then on Tuesday, we have Art Club for the 7th and 8th graders. Then on Wednesday, there is no school, and there is a course and band field trip to downtown Chicago. And there is no school on Thursday or Friday for Thanksgiving, so we will have a five-day weekend. This is Reese and Mackenzie spinning out. Bye, MMS, and remember, you have a five-day weekend. Did you hear MMS wants your books? Let's see if Reese can tell us why we have to bring more books to MMS. Hey guys, it's Reese. Did you know 61% of low-income families have no books at all in their home for their children? Here at MMS, we are participating in a book drive to help kids in need get books to read. Starting Monday, November 21st, and ending Friday, December 9th, please consider cleaning off your bookshelves at home to bring in new or gently used books. There. These books can range from birth to middle school level. You don't have to go buy anything to help out. Boxes for donation drops offs will be in your language art classroom and the library. Our school-wide goal is 1,500 books, and we will be do donating to Bern Bernie Books Bank, Book Bank. Joining a brother and sister, Allie and Ryan, reach their own personal goal of helping to get one million books donated. You will hear more about this because in your LA in your LA classes. Thanks for watching. Bye, MMS. Now we go to Brooke and Brett singing about our awesome chorus. Hey guys, it's the Brett and Brooke show, and today we're going to be talking about band and choir. Why? Because it's the, there's a contest coming up, that's why. It's the solo and ensemble contest on February 4th. The recital's on February 2nd at 5.30. Be sure to come, musicians. Six, seventh, and eighth graders are participating, including myself. To all the student musicians that are in it, good luck. This, this was the Brett and Brooke Show, spinning out. Bye, MMS. Let's see what holiday our holiday updaters are teaching teaching us about this week. Welcome, Welcome Earthlings, to, to MMS News. News. Hi, my name's Alyssa. And Frida. We are the Holiday Girls. Today we are talking about the top three Thanksgiving foods. Coming in at number three is gravy. The gravy boat is the most softened after dish on the Thanksgiving table. I think hardened, uh, hearty, great, hearty gravy can save even the blendness of meals. Think of it this way. Would you rather have a ha have a carving, carving of turkey breast without gravy or no turkey at all? The answer should be clear. Coming in at number two is stuffing. Turkey merely provides cavity for stuffing. Thanksgiving's true centerpiece stuffing is a reward akin to delectable candy packed into a tasteless butterbell pinata. Stuffing is so good, in fact, we stuff it inside of our turkey. Lastly but not least is number one, pie. Perhaps you are a pecan pie person or maybe pumpkin is more your thing. Sweet potato pie is sublime. All are excellent choices. Each choice is an edible triangular vessel for whipped cream, or if you are an abusive, or abusive, uh, for the, 
for ice cream. Need to excuse yourself for to change into sweatpants? Sure thing, because Pi is the light of the end of the turtle. The reason we push ourselves and make room. Each bit of flaky crust filled with nature's caramelized sugar is a testament to human perseverance. Pi is a tri tri uh, triumph. Bye, Bye the best news. See, See you on, on the, the other side. side. Uh. All right, Madeline is back. So you know, the music is going to be loud and fun. Now to the top 10. Hello, I'm MMS, and welcome to the top 10 songs of the week. Sorry I wasn't here last week, but I now am. Well, now to the top 10 songs of the week. The 10th song of the week is a new song. Shout out to me by Little Mix. The ninth song of the week is a new song. Human by Ray Long I'm only human after all. The eighth song of the week is also a new song. Say You Won't Let Go by James Arthur. To say you won't let go. The seventh song of the week is a new song. Rock a Baby by Clean Bandit featuring Sean Paul and Annie, Ma Annie Marie. I'm gonna rock you, rock a bye, baby, don't you cry. The sixth song of the week went down one. Let Me Love You by DJ Snake featuring Justin Bieber. Nah, nah, nah. The fifth song of the week is a new song, Easy Street by the Collapse of Hearts. We're on Easy Street, and it feels so sweet. The fourth song of the week went down for 24K Magic by Bruno Mars. The third song of the week stayed the same, Don't Wanna Know by Maroon 5. I don't wanna know, no, 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 who's taking you home? The sec second song of the week stayed the same. Closer by the Chain Smokers. And the top song of the week is Store Boy by The Weeknd featuring Draft Punk. The top 10 songs is brought to you by Metal and Sino. I hope you guys all have a nice weekend and a wonderful Thanksgiving and Black Friday shop. Since there won't be news that next week, I will tell you that. Bye, MMS. Our new Anime Insider is here with another cool show we should be watching. Wonder what it is. Howdy, MMS, and I'm Michael on Anime Insider. Today, I'm going to talk about the ever-popular Death Note. Let's get to the point. A Death Note is a notebook where if someone's name is written inside, they will die. And nothing can stop their death. <laughs> The main character, Light Yagami, is a brilliant high school student who finds this notebook. He then finds out something interesting about himself. He has a god complex. He believes that if he kills every bad person, no matter how evil or petty the crime is, innocent or guilty, if accused and if their name and picture revealed, he will kill them by writing their name. Once his new world is made, he'll become the god of the new world. You may ask. What if some people have the same name? Another rule of the Death Note, you have to picture their face in your mind. There are many rules of the Death Note, but I'd rather stay away from spoilers. So more of the story, don't have a god complex, and don't give out your name to strangers, ever. Sayonara, MMS. Let's check out Adam and his cool info about Pixar shorts. Hopefully the story isn't short. Yeah. Hello, I'm Mess. This is Adam, and welcome to the top three Pixar shorts. So next year's story, there will be top three games. So moving on, number three is Luke's so Jin. Here, it's where a little and big lamp are trying to get rid of a ball. Number two is Tin Toy. It's where a tin man toy is trying to get away from a big big baby. Ball. And number one, of course, is Presto. It's where a magic man is trying to pull a rabbit out of his hat, but it's hard for. The top three Pixar shorts are from Walt Disney and Pixar Studios. Tell me your favorite Pixar short at A. G. Garcia, A. Garcia, seven hundred A. D. fifteen dot org. And Thanksgiving is next week. See you later, MMS. Now we check out what's playing with Orion at the theaters. Uh, hey, MMS, it's your favorite. It's me, your favorite person to hate. You know me. This week I'm reviewing the movie Shut In. Shut In is about a woman named Mary who cares for her paralyzed 18 year old son, Stefan. Mary lets one of her psychology patients in her home, which is a boy. 
and he runs off in the woods during a snowstorm, which is a great idea. Mary starts to just know strange things in her house and is convinced that the boy is in her home, physical form or spiritual. Luckily for her, a big snowstorm comes in and she's shut in, hence the name. Shut in come, came out last week, but I had nothing to do. Fantasy, fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them doesn't come out until like next week. If you like my segment, you probably won't. Then email Mr. Yearden about how much you like it. Email him at mreardon at d15.org. And yes, spam is encouraged. Just do it. See you next week, MS. Bye. Wonder what Matt and Adam will tell us to read about the comic book update. Hey guys, it's me, the comic book collector guy with my buddy again. And today we are talking about a, a vigilante. His name is Black Spider. Coming from DC Comics and Detective Comics, 463 in 1976. I have this comic book and I personally really like it. It has lots of action, mystery, and drama. Anyway, his name is Eric Needlehammer. He was a drug addict, but a after accidentally killing his father, he became uh, a drug war on the Lords. Donning a costume, he became a self-styled vigilante and began killing those who suspected of dr dealing drugs. This brings him into conflict with Batman because Batman doesn't like you to kill people. Nino Hamlin believes that the two should be allies as he's seen a common person in their war against criminals, but with his murderous methods, uh, the Dark Knight does not like it. He gets himself killed in a comic, but takes down some drug lords in the process. He recently was in the cartoon Suicide Squad. Not the movie, but the cartoon. Well, that's all for now, but remember, give a man a mask and he will show his true self. All right, now we go to some real wild animals with Haley and Ashley. Hey guys, it's Haley and Ashley here, and welcome back to Wild Animals. Today we will be talking about the top three most alien-like animals. First up on our list is the rosy-lipped batfish. This alien-like fish lives on the ocean floor off the coast of Costa Rica. This fish has little feet that stick out the side like a turtle to help it walk around the ocean floor. The rosy lip batfish has little white tentacles that stick out around its lips. To me, it looks like a mustache. Next up is the Mexico City Lake Dweller, also known as the uh, Axolotl. This white, most very likely sliming, slimy fish amphibian is found in Mexico City and nowhere else in the world. It is also the only amphibian that spends its entire life in the water. This, an alien, this alien amphibian looks like an underwater lion with its pinkish tentacles poking out of its head. Very strange. Such wow. Last up on our list is the Saiga antelope. This antelope looks like a devil goat with Squidward's nose. The Saiga antelope is found in Central Asia and is, very is, and is a very endangered species. It is also found in, in a small area in western Mongolia. That is our list of alien-looking animals, most likely my cousins. These are pictures from my last family reunion. <laughs> <laughs> That's all we have for today. This, this is been Ashley, Ashley and Haley, Haley signing out. Peace. Okay, so McKenna seems to have become a mannequin. So let's send it to YouTuber to see if they can explain more about this craze. What? <laughs> Hey, I'm Drake, and I will talk about the Mannequin Challenge. The Mannequin Challenge is a viral internet craze where people are filmed while being still like mannequins. There is usually music in the background. The Mannequin Challenge appeared in Edward H. High School in Jacksonville, Florida on October 26, 2016. Now many people go do it, and so has Mr. Kilsterman's seventh grade class. Here's the video. Always to keep me laughing. Hello once again, people of MMS. My name is Rodney. And I'm Peyton. And we're the JFL. This week we'll be talking about some uh, Thanksgiving fails. <laughs> but anyway, let's get to the fails. Number three is the oh, wow. wow. Number two is 
the Explody McPody Hody. Number one is the Chili Wave. <laughs> That's it, MMS. You might have your face up. Alright, MMS, this is a wrap. This is a wrap? That's a wrap. You stay classy. Thanksgiving, I like it. Stay classy, MMS. Yay! I like turkey. <laughs>